Life Revolution Church. Are you out there? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's stand to our feet tonight and today. <laughs> Come on, put your hands in the air. Just begin to worship him out of your heart. Come on. Woo, we got a message tonight ready to go with it. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We give you all the glory and all the honor in the matchless name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that tonight we're leaving here different than the way we came in, changed and rearranged by the power of the word and the spirit together in Jesus' mighty name. Just begin to rejoice ahead of time for what's getting ready to happen in here. Come on. Begin to rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift up your voice. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, are you ready to praise him tonight? There's resurrection power inside of you. Come on, say, there's resurrection power inside of me. Hallelujah.
you free?
by his blood we wash clean now we have the victory yes we do the power of sin is broken jesus overcame it all oh because he has won it he has won our freedom jesus has won it all come on sing hallelujah yeah. 
Jesus. Jesus. I think when you understand just saying the name of Jesus, what happens? You got to understand, Jesus is not just a name. It's not just any name. It's actually the name that's above every name. There are people watching right now online. Just begin to say the name of Jesus right into your circumstance. Just begin to say the name of Jesus right over your body. Begin to say the name of Jesus right over your mind. Begin to say the name of Jesus in here. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout the name of Jesus. There's somebody that came in tonight, and the pain goes from your shoulders, upper shoulders, all the way across your back, all the way to the other side, down close to your bicep, and you've had like a dull ache with that. I'm getting ready to lay hands on you, and when I do, all that's going to go instantly. Come on, who is that? I know I'm not missing it. Come on up here. Come on, let's take care of that pain right now. Come here. I want to show them where I'm talking about. It's... It goes from like right here, right across, just on the other side of your shoulder. Come on, who is that? Is that you? Lift your hands, both hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, there it left. As soon as I said the name of Jesus, it left. Tell me what was going on. Just tightness right in, right in my like, lats. Right across here. And it went right across your neck and right through here. Was it hindering your sleep a little bit? Well, look at that. It all left. Do what you couldn't do before. Move that all around. Where's the pain? It's all gone. There's. Come on, somebody. Can you? Never get used to the power of God. Never get so used to his glory and his miracle working power that you just sit there and look and go, my God, where's my popcorn? That's a good, that's a good show. Come on, he was healed of that 2,000 years ago. Before he ever had that pain, Jesus hung on the cross for it. I don't want to set a, a bad tone here or anything, but again, it's amazing to me when I'm trying to get people to just shout and praise God when you don't really need anything, how hard it is for some people to do in a service. But then they're the same ones that call you and say, hey, we just had an emergency. Will you please pray for this? Will you pray for that? And I'm like, probably wouldn't have that emergency if you'd learn to rejoice. Come on. It's the truth. It's the truth. Like I said, I'm not trying yeah. to set any other tone than just the power of God in this place. But what would happen if you just rejoiced before you needed him? Yes. Rejoiced while you know you need yes. him? And rejoice yes. after you have the manifestation of... What yes. would that sound like in this place? Come on, you're responsible for your row. Set your row on fire tonight. Come on, catch your row on fire. Hey, Robert, is she watching right now, or do you know? Robert has a co-worker named Karen. She's asking for prayer for her dad. He had a stroke a couple of weeks ago, just got out of the hospital last night, and then he fell and he broke his hip. So healing and peace for the family because they're, they're stressing out. I almost want to know, am I in the right place to ask anybody in here to be in agreement with me right now? Let me ask over here, am I in the right place? Come on, faith has a sound. Faith has a look. 
Faith does not remain silent. Faith doesn't just stand there picking its nose. Faith has an action to it. Father, we lift up Karen's dad to you right now. We know there's no distance in the spirit. We command that all the effects of the stroke be reversed right now in her dad. We come against every foul assignment that was set against his body, and we command it to be broken now in the name of Jesus. Hip be restored supernaturally. We command the break to mend supernaturally right now, and for him to get back to normal quickly, even now, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now here's what you do. If you really believe what we prayed is working, then we begin to rejoice like we already have it. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Jesus. It is finished. Somebody shout that with me. It is finished. Come on, one more time. It is finished. One more shout of praise. Come on. Glory to God. Well, welcome back into the House Life Revolution Church. Hallelujah. This is what our fourth time we've gotten to meet together. So we're real excited. We are Pastors Jay and Tammy Hoskins, and we want to welcome you. Turn around and shake hands with two or three hundred people. Tell them you're glad they're here and give them your best. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord. It's amazing to me to see these young men here, right here, my brothers from another's, on fire, had prayer last week, and uh, they left different than the way they came in. Yeah, praise God. What do you think? Do you think God enjoys patty cake? If you're going to praise God, then praise Him. Amen? Come on, these kids are on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me help you with something. If no matter what I say, you refuse to do anything because that's your choice, you're right. Your free will is greater than God's in your life. But anyway, also got a chance to hear that they also have birthdays. One, I think Z's is in April. Aiden's was last week. Is that right? And then Jaden is today. Is that right? 12 years old. Can we just sing uh, a happy birthday to all three of them at once? Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 I forgot. One of the greatest things is really what's happening here is all the way from Tampa, Florida. Yeah. Love it. All the way from Tampa, Florida. All the way from Brother Rodney Howard Brown's church. They, uh, they're on staff there, and they work and help in their church, and they got to bring us the blessings. Our grandsons are with us with one shoe. Yeah. There he is. His name's Finn. He's a little sweetheart. And you probably saw Sawyer running around the place here, too. He was also, like, just looking at the TV monitor, just face first. Did you, were you able to see the words around his head? Yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. Hey, Finn. So, and then we've got my, my son-in-law, Corey Bowman, and my daughter, Jordan Bowman, and they are here. Jordan just celebrated her birthday yesterday, and uh, so we're going to sing all of these fine folks happy birthday, and I'm going to need somebody to help lead it. Ready? Happy birthday. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, God bless you, all of you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Got my dear friend Frank Borda, Minister Frank Borda is in the house again tonight, so excited. He, uh, he goes all over. He was in the Philippines, uh, of course. Uh, certain things happened over the last few months, and now he's back here, but uh, we're excited that he's here worshiping with us, powerful man of God, looking to do some stuff together here in the area, so uh, keep tuned in for that. And then we also have Houston back in the house. For those of you that don't know, Houston is in Texas. Anybody from Texas on our team here? <laughs> I think a prerequisite is you have to be from Texas to be on the team. 
And then uh, got my buddy Jason Barnes back, and uh, he's been out of town for a while, but he uh, helps us with security and ushering. Uh, Jason, not Joshua, for those watching. Uh, <laughs> Jason uh, has been a uh, bodyguard uh, for Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Uh, also a, a guy named Justin Bieber, who I don't know if he actually is uh, a minister. He is to some people, I guess, but, uh, you know, what's that? You're a believer? All right, whatever. But anyway, so we're, we're very blessed to have him with us, and then all my friends that I haven't seen since maybe Wednesday, God bless you. Hey, the Lighthouses have been amazing. Get involved with Lighthouses. They are our midweek that you want to be a part of. We got Dennis and Mona Grooms. If you want to come up here, uh, Brother Dennis, and just say a couple of words about that and uh, get them invited and let them know about what's happening in the lighthouses. It's a vision God put in our heart here, uh, actually at the very beginning of the church. Uh, does anybody remember the actual vision of the church around here? Connect with God, connect with people, and connect with purpose. And part of that connecting with God, people, and purpose was the vision of lighthouses. So let's give it up for Brother Dennis Grooms. He's uh, the director and head over our lighthouses. Well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Somebody said yay. <laughs> they didn't want me talking anyway. I want to hear it. Praise God. Well, we're excited about the lighthouses. We have uh, two lighthouses in Broken Arrow during the month. And then we have one in Owasso. And uh, attendees there are anywhere from about 10 to 12 people in each group. And it gives an opportunity for people that want to come to, uh, uh, I'll, I'll kind of give you a gist of what's going on. We have an icebreaker to begin with. And then we have praise and worship. And then we take the sermon that Pastor Jay has ministered on the previous week and of course, we don't do it two or three hours. We cut it down a little bit. But, it's not uh, his fault he doesn't have the depth to go that long. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> no, I don't go two or no. three hours. Don't get freaked I'm out kidding. tonight. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. But, uh, you know, it gives us time to interact with one another and uh, learn and grow, uh, knit one another's hearts together. Uh, it's a caring, nurturing, loving atmosphere. And then we, uh, we pray for the services. We pray for people. We take testimonies. And uh, it's just a great, great time. How many, of you, how many of you in here realize there needs to be something like this going on within the churches? I, I don't know about you all, but we've been starving for years about relationships. And uh, it gives us a time to come together and iron sharpens iron, yes, you know, and gives you an opportunity to release your overflow to us during the week. And so there's excitement built every time we come together, just like it should be in the local church. Amen? Yes. You're bringing your overflow to draw on the man of God tonight. Praise God. And we'll be surprised, you'll be surprised what comes out of him from the Lord to you. You know? So anyway, we're excited about the live. Where can they get connected? Can they, they can do it on the app, right? Yeah, they we can do it app. on the app. Uh, there should be a sign-up sheet out there. Uh, connect with uh, me or my wife after this service. There's Mona right there. Uh, yeah, amen. Uh, we've just said in the last... Uh, few weeks we've had five or seven new new uh, participants come That's awesome. so hey, and it, it's an also it's also an opportunity about everything that I told you about but it's a time to pray for the lost yeah. and that we're totally believing that as we come together and knit our hearts together that it's going to be like the book of Acts where evangelism is not going to be a hard thing it's going to be an easy thing because People are going to be drawn to the Jesus inside of you. And, and I, I believe it's just like in Wigglesworth Day, people are going to come up to you and say, My God, man, you convict me of my sin. How must I get saved? Oh, well, there's got to be more excitement in here than that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. I don't, want to, I don't want anybody being drawn to me. No, you do. You do. 
You do. It's the Jesus inside of you. And don't let fear, don't let fear hold you back. Because you got the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of you, resurrection power on the inside of you, to be able to do what God has enabled you to do and called you to do. So we can rejoice in that. Every day is a new day, folks. And every day is a new day to light your light for Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you. God bless you. Hey, guys. Good evening. Welcome to Life Revolution Church. How's everybody doing? No, no, no. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? It's so great to see all of you tonight. Um, we also want to welcome all of our online viewers. Yes, thank right. you. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, uh, if you're watching from YouTube, Facebook, um, and... And the, and the web. And the app. If you're the watching app. from the app, thank you for joining us yes. this evening. Welcome, welcome. Let us know where you guys are watching from. So we want to hear from you. Yes. Um, send in your prayer request. Um, if you're online and, you know, you've got a prayer request, you just need some, uh, someone to be in agreement with you for whatever it is, uh, send it on over and Pastor Jay will pray for you live online and you can expect God to move and not just your prayer requests what else do we want send to send in your testimony yes we because love your here, testimony what do we say we say our, our testimony is are more powerful, powerful than, than our, our prayer requests. requests that's right that's right so just like she was saying pastor jay and not even just pastor jay everybody here we're going to join in prayer and be in agreement with you for whatever the need is whatever's going on and also i want to remind everybody watching online if this is your first time catching us online that we are in a new building yep. at the, right here at the No Limits Event Center. If you do want to come and join us, we're no longer at the bank. We're over here every Friday night at 7 p.m. What time? 7 p.m. What time? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So there that means um, you guys want to get here like a little bit before 7? Before 7, Start that's right. Start getting your seats in. That's right, that's right. Place going. And one more thing. If yes. you are watching online, and you are in the area. There's still time to come join us. Yes, come join us. We'd love to see your faces. By all means. So, uh, like I said, um, we do have our Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're not uh, following us on Instagram, you need to do that. Yes. Please. Follow um, us on Instagram as well as Twitter. Yes. At Life Revolution Church. We're on all those. At Life Rev Church. At Life yes. Rev Church. I apologize. Our at Life handle Rev Church. is at Life Rev Church. And if everybody, who lives on YouTube? Who lives? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, basically, right? I mean, she's not, she's you guys not. go on to YouTube and like search different videos, like those funny cat videos and stuff. No? Wake up, people! <laughs> no, it's too late. They don't go. Um, they don't. We're trying, we're trying. They so um, on YouTube, find us, uh, find the church. Life Revolution Church. And what do they want to do, Papa? They want to go ahead and subscribe. Once you see these beautiful faces of our pastors, Jay and Tammy Hoskins. Very lovely. Subscribe immediately. Please. Checking out our videos from last week and the week before. Yes. And the week before and the week before. Yes. And again, because it bears repeating, mm -hmm. download our app. How many of you have not downloaded our church app? Oh, come on, guys. Oh, come on. It's okay if you haven't. It's okay if you haven't. Go ahead and get your phones out. Mm -hmm. Get your phones out right now, please. You want to download the app. <laughs> you want to download the app. I absolutely love the app. Yeah. I can go and, you know, watch different services from Pastor. Um, I can give at mm. any time. Anytime. There's, I don't know if you can see it. There's a hand with a heart. It's like this. And it's got a heart. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I love it because I can just give and it'll take me uh, right to where I need to go. Mm -hmm. And it's secure. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't want to give on an app. Right, you right. Know? It's Security. secure. It, right. It's secure. It's a secure app. You can give um, your tithes and your offerings on there at That's any right. time. You don't have to wait, wait till you're in service. That's right. Right? That's right. You don't have to wait till you're in service. You can also sign up for to join our life crew. You can mm -hmm. sign up for prayer requests. There's just a litany of things you guys can do on yes. the app. So please please download the app. Yes. Um, Fafa, I have a question. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about Revive? 
Revive is our youth, our student ministries. Where are you guys at? Raise your hand. Let's see you in the back. Yeah. There you are. There you are. Pastor Jay, you're not in our revive. Mom, you're not in revive. <laughs> you're, you're supposed to tell them after service. Oh, okay. Not during. So what do we have going on with revive? So right now going on with revive, if you just like we were saying, I know you guys have phones. Hop on Instagram. We have every week our weekly devotional, quick little message called Revive in Five. And we've all been going through them, all of our leaders in there right now. So I encourage you guys, go back. Don't just watch them that one time when it premieres on Friday, but watch it again throughout the week. I'm going to say something real quick. Parents, um, I'm a mom of an amazing daughter who is in Revive. Yeah. Um, you know, so... Parents, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and follow uh, Revive as well on Instagram. Um, you can see what the leaders um, are telling your youth, and I absolutely love it. I share the post as well. You know, I like it. So it's not just encouraging your youth, but it's going to encourage you as well so you can know uh, what, what's going on, what they're, what they're talking about. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I got one more announcement for you guys in Revive. Also, as well for the parents, we have our camp coming up, and I want to let you know that we have sign-ups available tonight, right after service. You can look for me. It's How pretty easy. Uh, I believe. How we... many of you have already signed up for camp? Raise your hand if you signed up for camp. There's one, we got two. two so far. What about you two right there? We got two more. Two more right there. So we got a total of four. Is Miss Destiny going to camp? <laughs> she said she was. Yes. Yes, there Alicia, we go. I know. Alicia said his destiny is going to get. It's going to be an amazing time. It's going to be an amazing time. Cassidy's, Cassidy's going. going. Yep. I'm, I'm kind of jealous. Because exactly, guys, this is parents, parents, parents. I want to go to this camp because it's going to be, it's all part of uh, Billy Brim's ministry. Mm -hmm. That's right. They are, our youth are going to have a service with Brother Kenneth Copeland. That's right. Oh, That's right. I, I love to watch Kenneth Copeland and Billy Brim, mm -hmm. and I feed on their ministries as well. So I am so excited for our youth yep. to be going to this camp. So It's going to be amazing. And it's for kids in 6th grade through 12th grade they can come. And it's going to be on the dates of July 28th through the 30th. It's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and, thir and uh, Thursday. Yes. And it's going to be in Collinsville, so it's not too far from here, actually. It's going to be about 15 to 20 minutes away. And the cost... It's not overnight. And it's not overnight, no. Because of the whole COVID situation, they kind of reformatted it. And so it's going to be every day for a few hours. We're going to have meetings. We're going to have worship. We're going to have games. We're going to have food provided for them. And then, but it's not overnight. So we're going to drop your kids back off to you again. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we're going to come get them the next day and then take them back to camp and then do that one more time. Yes, they can, like I said, they can sign up tonight. You look for me. It's pretty easy. I got the nice shoes on just like your, your son-in-law has the white chucks. And they got a white shirt on as well. Pretty easy to spot me. Now, the cost per student is $125. And I know Pastor made this announcement last week. If there's anybody who wants to go, we're going to make sure that you're, you're ready to go. We're going to make sure you guys can go. And so, yeah, that's about it for, the, right. for Revive. You guys so, keep your ears, keep your eyes open. That's right. So I'm kind of excited for that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, last but not very least, um, the most important announcement that we have today. Yeah. Um, isn't today the last Friday of the month? Today is the last Friday what of the month. What does that mean? It means it's heart for the house. Heart for the house. Woo! Right? Um, I just want to give another quick little financial testimony because God has been completely amazing. Guys, at the beginning of the year, God told me, if you take care of my house, I will take care of your house. And so I, I said, okay, God, I'm going to take you up on your word. I have made it a point to give extra offerings. I've made it a point to give in our heart for the house every single month. Um, this week, um, I, had, uh, I was expecting uh, monies to come in, um, but I got way above so much more than I was expecting. I was expecting a few hundred dollars. Praise God, God is faithful. I received $3,500 more. And you can't tell me that it's just by chance. Because God said that when you give, he's going to take care of everything that you need, guys. I, I cannot stress that enough. So tonight... Guys, make sure you give, or the, uh, anytime this weekend, if you didn't come prepared to give tonight, mm -hmm. 
You can always give on the app. You yep. can, you know, uh, do it your text to give. So Pastor Jay, I'm sure we'll have more mm -hmm. information about that. But I just want to encourage all of you guys. Talk to God. Listen, he's going to yeah. speak to you, and he's going to tell you what you need to do. That's right. If it's individually, as a family, guys, I promise you, especially this time right now yeah. that we're going through, yeah. you know, I, I was laid off because of COVID, but God has been so good. I mean, I haven't missed a beat with any bills, my rent, my car payment, insurance, nothing. I have lacked nothing. I have been able to be a blessing yeah. to my family yeah, these past few weeks. I've been able able to be a blessing just to different people because I obey God, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Praise right. God. And that's all we got. That's all we have for you guys. Thank you. Hey, let's give it up for these guys. They do a great job. So thankful for them. Praise the Lord. Make sure you check in, share it, let people know that you're excited about your church. Those that are watching online, again, welcome. So glad that you're with us. Make sure you share. Let us know where you're watching from. Share the broadcast. Get the word out, we always say. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, that testimony that Clara just gave was an excellent precursor to uh, tonight's giving message. Are y'all excited about giving in here tonight? I'm going to tell you, uh, because it's not your faith uh, that, that is running the vision, so to speak. Uh, God's put it in our heart, and uh, the vision that we've been asked to be responsible with for this house, uh, we believe we're doing it, and uh, we've got more resources than we have vision. Somebody else say it. I said, we got more resources than we have vision. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, and I'm going to finish a little bit about where we covered uh, last week, uh, but what she just said is, she said, if you'll take care of my house, I'll take care of your house, and that's interesting because that's the line I was going to go around tonight. Hallelujah. So kids, you're dismissed. Those little fire brands, temples of the living God, give it up for them. Man, so excited. We have embers, we have sparks, and we have fires. That's our kids' life. And uh, we pour into them. We take it very serious. We don't babysit them. We don't just give them a veggie tail and a God bless you. All right. Philippians chapter 4, and it says here in verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, which means this. He's not going to look just solely for how to meet your need here on earth. He's not depended by people here on this earth to meet your need. He's going to do it right out of his glory, which affects people here on this earth, which then in turn affects everything that you have need of. But the thing is, is I learned this a long time ago, and I learned it from a man of God, and I was listening to him, and, I, and Brother Kenneth E. Hagan said this. He goes, sometimes you need to learn to sow a seed towards your need. Now, the tr then the other thing is, is although I agree with that, there's a balance to it also because uh, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown said years ago, irritated the fire out of me when he said this. He goes, how come all of you are using your faith each and every week, each and every month just to get your needs met when my God said he would meet those effortlessly? He said, you should be putting your faith out there for the need of mankind and getting people saved and getting souls won to Jesus Christ. And yet you're still worried about getting your car payment paid, your house payment paid, your water bill paid, your gas bill paid, your, your $500 cable bill, satellite paid. Come on. But he's, this is what he said. He goes, what would happen if you just trusted God that he automatically would meet all your need and yet you put all your faith out every single week to get somebody saved for Jesus? You'll never be happy until you start winning the loss. You'll burn out. You'll always be looking for the next big thing, the next big office, the next big uh, bonus, the next big uh, uh, insurance uh, thing to take care of you at your work and your benefits and all of this. You'll always be stretching and looking, but what would happen if you started using your faith every single week just to get one person saved and said, you know what? Listen, I like you. You don't know anything about church. You don't know anything about Jesus, but you just gave your life to him. Now come to my church. Let's go ahead and just fill this thing up and let us flood you 
with the knowledge of Jesus Christ and what you're called to do. I'll help you connect with God. I'll help you connect with people. I'll help you connect with your purpose. My God, I know I'm in the wrong place again tonight, but thank you anyway for your enthusiasm. But check this out now. If you did start sowing seed toward your need, there is a balance to that too. Because you're trusting God to take care of your need, but you're showing him by sowing seed. Because your heart's involved. Heart for the house. Do you know what we did tonight? We sowed $1,000 towards the house. Now, you're not going to like this, but it's still the truth. We sowed $1,000, but it didn't go into our heart for the house account. It went into individuals. They can't give me a write-off. You, you're not hearing me. I'll, let me come over here. I said, they can't give me a tax receipt at the, it, it, the end of the year for my, my giving. Come on, are you out there? I, I, we were led to sow $1,000 tonight towards the house. You know why? Because that's how much it was going to cost this uh, July payment because there's five Fridays. Now watch this. There was a precious couple that could not make that payment like they thought they were going to be able to. They aren't able to make it, but you know what? We just took everything that they were going to give towards the next month, and we sowed it anyway out of our heart. <laughs> because God is our source, and we know how to sow seed toward our need. Oh, you're not hearing me. I'm telling you, just like Clara got up tonight, she knows how to sow seed towards her need. She was laid off. First, she was furloughed. Then she was fur buried. All right, she was laid off, right? And more money has come to her in this state and in this season than she had. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? I'm talking like thousands of dollars have been coming to her. Not, not, and these are outside of the stimulus checks. This is outside of the government checks. This is showing God saying, hey, my checks are better than the government's checks, all right? Because my stuff comes out of my riches in glory. And there are no limits. There is no debt in his riches in glory. There is nobody holding him accountable that says, if you give this, you're going to have to get it back. He is not that way. He's got more, and if he runs out, he'll create more. It's in his glory that our needs are met. I'm telling you, this has got me excited. So when I sow a seed or sow a big seed, to you, some of that, that wasn't that big a seed. To us, it was a pretty good-sized seed. And we did it knowing that we needed it for next month anyway. When somebody said they were going to pay for next month's uh, rent, I said, you know what, Lord? I'm going to get stupid crazy in the devil's face, and I'm going to sow exactly what we need for next month right into some other ground that's good ground, and then I'm going to boldly stand up in front of my congregation and say, every single heart for the house, when so much money is going to be coming in to take care of next month, month and the next month and the next month it's going to happen and what happens when you take care of the household of faith your household gets taken care of too come on now are you all excited about that somebody say i'm gonna sow seed towards my need and he meets all my need according to his riches in glory through and by Christ Jesus. Woo. Come on, ushers. Let's go ahead and hand out the seed packets right now. Let's put, some, uh, let's put some heart into this. This is on top of your regular tithes and offerings. That means you've had three weeks to call in extra money. How many in here actually do that? Don't, don't get embarrassed. But I'm thinking probably, it, by the way it feels, probably not a lot of people. I want to encourage you to start sowing seed but call in the seed because he says he gives seed to the sower, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. He gives seed to the sower. What would happen if you started asking for more seed to sow? Would more come in? Absolutely. It always does for us. As a matter of fact, we already just said, Lord, this, this extra came in and it became seed. So we decided let's sow seed to the sower or, or sow seed as the sower because he gave us seed to sow. So what ends up happening is, is when you take care of the household of faith, your house gets taken care of. Here's some ways to give. You can mail it in, Life Revolution Church. But if you're here, you don't need to mail it in. You're here. If you're making out a check, make it out to Life Revolution Church or LRC. There's a way to give uh, by credit card on there as well. If you're watching on Facebook, you can do hashtag donate 
and uh, the amount. And then in the comments there, if you put that in, our friends from Good World will take care of you. You can also do Cash App. Here's our Cash App uh, hashtag or the uh, the Cash App symbol, the dollar sign Life Revolution. You can give by Cash App, or you can text to give. Life Revolution, or text Life Rev to 888-364-GIVE, 888-364-GIVE. Glory to God, did I get them all? <laughs> we, like I say, we make it extremely hard for you to be stingy. You can give on the app too, there's a way to give on the app. Hey, we've got some good things happening here. I've got my son-in-law and my daughter, they're going to bless us. Uh, for this time. Are you all ready? You got it? Do you need a mic? There you go. Hey, let's give it up for Corey and Jordan here. As, as the buckets go past, you please stand. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for every seed sown tonight. Every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you that all the needs of this house are met. All the needs of their household are met. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise for every time, Lord, we come into your presence like this to give. We, it's an act of worship, and as we give, it shall be given back unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give back mightily unto us. In Jesus' mighty name, if you agree with that, shout amen. Just like you said, it's an act of worship, so once the buckets pass you by, I want you to lift up your hands, start praising the Lord. Not only for what he has done, what he's doing, and what he will do, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that every need is met. Not only need, but just like Pastor said, there's going to be so much coming into the, this house. Hallelujah. So much into this house. that There's going to be too much resources for the vision. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Just start worshiping right now. Thank you. Yeah. 
Come on, just close your eyes, sing those words. Very simple song. they continue to play that if you have pain in your body if you have sickness in your body even if you've been tormented in your mind it just seems like lately you just can't get your mind straight it just seems like something's going wrong something's trying to distract you something's trying to keep you off focus depression has tried to knock at your door oppression maybe you're watching online that's for you as well but those that need healing in your body, I'm going to ask you right now just to come up here real quick. As soon as hands are laid on you, that power is going to go into your body. And all that pain is going to go in the name of Jesus. Praise God if nobody has any pain in their body. Because honestly, that's where we want to get to. Praise the Lord. If that's you, come on up here. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank you, Father. Come on, just sing that. Those that came up, just lift your hands and begin to sing that unto him. The power of God's going to soak your body. And all that pain is going to leave. All that sickness is going to go out of you. All that stuff in your mind is going to dissipate. Oh, we exalt you. In the name of Jesus. Watch it. Free in the name of Jesus. Free in the name of Jesus. All pain go from your body. Go. How's that? How's that? Stay right there. <laughs> Fire healed in the name of Jesus. There it goes. There it goes. Woo! <laughs> Make sure you're watching what's behind you because you're knocking the rose. You may have to bring them forward. That would make more sense. Heal in the name of Jesus. Move it. It's gone. <laughs> Move your neck around. It's healed. Healed in the name of Jesus. What's happening here, brother? Free in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Free. Free in the name of Jesus. There it goes. There it goes. <laughs> More. Woo. Woo. <laughs> fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. <laughs> Come on, let's lift our hands. Come here, Melissa. What was going on?
You felt that pop? People are getting healed up here. Come on, let's praise God. People are getting set free up here. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise God in here. That means lift up your hands. That means lift up your voice. Come on now. We glorify the name of the Lamb. Jesus, we praise you. We glorify you. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Thank you for the deliverances, the miracles, people being set free, people being set free of bondages, set free of symptoms, sickness, disease, pain. And I give you the glory for it. I thank you also, Lord, that the power of God is going into these claws right now. Whoever's watching online or even those that are here, or you know, coworkers or friends, family that couldn't be here tonight but they're dealing with something let's get them a cloth let's get them one of these right now in acts 19 paul had uh, aprons and handkerchiefs and claws brought to him and while he ministered says the power of god went into these claws and when they were sent out to those that were in need they were set free of any demonic oppression any bondages all symptoms all healing that manifested and needed to take place happened just simply because the anointing that resided in these claws we've been having people write in and say please send us claws we've been sending out cloth after cloth after cloth and getting a lot of testimonies back and then we've also been having people pray the prayer of salvation with us at the end of the broadcast we've been sending out books so praise the lord can we give god the glory for that amen (laughs) praise you jesus praise you jesus Glory to God. Well, Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the word that is going forth. It'll go forth boldly, unhindered and uninterrupted by any satanic, demonic, or traditional religious force. I thank you that we have ears to hear and hearts that are open wide to receive the engrafted word. And I thank you that we're going to leave here so on fire that people can't help but want to ask us what's different about us and we'll get to give you more glory by saying it's the Holy Ghost in me I'm the temple of the living God I'm on fire I'm ready to see this place set on fire I'm ready to see Owasso set more on fire I'm ready to see all of Tulsa Jerusalem set on fire I'm ready to see this region set on fire and guess what he has anointed you and I to set this place on fire Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, if you can agree with that, somebody shout amen. Well, God bless you as you're seated. High five three people and tell them they're in the right place at the right time to receive their miracle. Hey, let's give it up for Corey and Jordan. How awesome was that, huh? Thank you guys so much. Happy birthday to, to my daughter. I can't believe she's... 
so old now. Oh, praise the Lord. Man, that's exactly what that means. Thank you for doing the math on that one. Praise God. Hey, turn with me to Revelation chapter 12. Got a new message for you tonight. I also want to give uh, an opportunity to say Happy Father's Day to those that couldn't be with us here last week. Who are dads in here that couldn't be with us last week? Okay, here, while their hands are up, I'm going to have you guys hand out their gifts. Look at that. We made you some gifts. Amen. Why don't you go around that way there, brother? Thank you. And uh, the ones that were uh, here last week had $100 gift cards in them. This week they don't. But um, I'm very sorry about that. Praise the Lord. Ha <laughs> 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 So Revelation chapter 12 in verse 10 says this, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and assume this last part we don't have to deal with. There's no reason to love your life unto the death to the point to where you're self-absorbed like that. But there are some other things I want to look at tonight about this. Number one, we see that the blood of Jesus, that's the hard part of your testimony. That's the hard part of you becoming an overcomer. And Jesus did all of that on the cross 2,000 years ago, shed every drop of blood he had so that you and I would have somewhere down the road the opportunity to be overcomers in this life. Hallelujah. Now, an overcomer, we keep thinking, we hear this, we almost get to the place to where we get word of faithy on things. You know what I mean? We get churchified on things. And the truth is, I've, I have seen more of a quarantined uh, filter, if you will, with people coming back it's like, did you worship God when you were at the house during quarantine? Did you pray in the Holy Ghost during quarantine? Were you sowing during the... These are all rhetorical questions in the sense that they really don't need to be answered. That's just between you and the truth. But the bottom line is, if we're not doing these things in private, honey, you ain't going to do them in public. And, and the truth is, a little virus really... And I talked to a politician uh, that's running here locally uh, here for a couple hours yesterday, and we were talking about this. He was asking me to pray for him, and he was talking about a senator he just met with in Oklahoma City, and he said this. He goes, there are few people in the government right now in Oklahoma that even believe remotely close to what we believe, yeah. and we're considered a complete red state, conservative, ready to go and believe God, come on, right, and do what he's called us to do. The church is supposed to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. And yet it seems so amazing to me that even the rights in Oklahoma are starting to be challenged. So the thing is, is you do not want to be silent during this time. Nobody else is being silent during this time. There's people over here on the negative swing of things not being silent, starting riots, being violent. When, is, when are we going to be the violent that take it back by force? Come on now. We don't have to have riotous living. We can be loud with righteous living and still get the point across. I mean, I'm talking about who cares if there's a church building open. You are the church. You are the building. You are the temple. Why don't you go inside a Walmart and where everybody seems to congregate, whether there's a virus or not, and just go down and start praying in the Holy Ghost? We used to do that in the airport all the time. When we would go in the airport, we would be praying in the Holy Ghost. People just thought we were foreigners. Ooh, I wonder what he's saying to her. He's letting her have it. He Ooh, I'm glad I don't know what he just said to her. But I'll tell you right now, if I did know, I'd whoop him. You know, come on. I'm talking about just living out loud. Amen. But instead, we want to be comfortable. Do you realize our lifestyle is not meant to be comfortable? That's why he gave us a comforter. 
So to be an overcomer, the blood of the lamb is the thing that was the hard part. And he took care of that for you and I. But what's amazing is how the enemy has tricked us into believing the hardest part is when we dare to use our mouth to start declaring and decreeing and speaking up about our testimony. And I'm not talking about this testimony. I used to be a rascal back in high school. I used to be a rascal back in the college days. But he saved me out of all of that mess. Oh, if I could just get somebody to give me an amen. If I just had somebody in here that knew what I was talking about. I used to do LSD, but now I got G-O-D. Oh, if I just had somebody out there that just knew what I was talking about. If I just had a white hanky, I'd wave it, but nobody in here knows what I'm talking about. You weren't saved out of what I was said. That's my testimony. And that's not really exactly the testimony he's talking about. Your testimony, although that's good, you used to be in darkness, now you're in light. The testimony you have is ongoing every single day as a witness, going around, letting people know that what I now live is a life you can live, and there's a fire. There's a holy fire that can burn through all that chaff and cause you to rise up into a new level of glory so you don't have to be going from glory to glory. You can be going from glory to glory to glory to glory. But too many times we're going from meeting to meeting. Let me help locate something here. You want to know if you've fallen into the deception of mental ascent? When you just go to church, not to be fed, but to agree. You want to know if you've fallen into the deception of mental ascent, where you don't really have faith, but you're near it. You see other people get stuff with faith, but you don't really have it yourself. Is when you just come to hear if I agree with the preacher instead of being fed by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let me give you a, the, the diff- what uh, mental ascent means in the spirit, also versus the physical. When my daughter doesn't want to eat broccoli and it's good for her, she won't eat broccoli. And she's a human. I can't make her. We tell her to sit down and eat it, but she just spreads it around to look like she tore into it a little bit. But when I say, why aren't you eating your broccoli? Because I'm full. (laughs) Okay, that's good to know. Because those chocolate chip cookies that are coming up out of the oven here in 10 minutes, that's more for me. Well, no, I'm too full of broccoli. No, honey, you're full of... I'm just... (laughs) You're full of something else and it ain't broccoli. It's because her taste buds have not acclimated... For the nutritious, she's like every other kid. She wants what tastes good. And that, my friend, is spiritual mental ascent. When all you want to do is go to agree with the pastor because he says good, syrupy, sugary things. But when it's time to eat the broccoli and it's time to get off the milk and it's time to get into the precious word and get that meat up in you, you're like, oh, I don't know. Let's go get a snow cone. This is too hot. I need something cooler. Oh, you're not hearing me. But the truth is, the word of our testimony is the other half of that. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you tonight. We have our life and what's going on in our life because of the words that come out of our mouth. The blood of the lamb, that's why it it messes with you. We see that, hey, listen, like, uh, you know, stuff breaking down. Somewhere down the line, you got to, after about eight or nine things, you got to say, all right, enough. I take authority over this. This isn't going to keep happening. I'm a tither. I'm a sower. I am a man that operates in the kingdom of God, and I take authority over this now in the name of Jesus, and I break this power. I will not have any calamity, any death, destruction, tragedy, anything. And the good thing about that is I was telling my wife on the way here yesterday or the day before. No, it was two or three days ago. I was pulling out. And the guy was letting me out. As I was pulling out, this guy decides to go around him into a turning lane to pass him, which would have ended up right in the front of my side. I don't know how to explain it. I know my reflexes are still pretty quick and lightning fast for a man of my age. Oh, hold on. 
Well, that was close. See what I mean? But what happened is, is all of a sudden, I felt like the car was pushed back by angels. And I just looked and I was like, I didn't even see him flying around. And normally I'm pretty observant. But I'm telling you, at the, as the day went on, I saw two and three accidents here and there. And I just said, no, in the name of Jesus. My stuff is taken care of. I put the blood of Jesus on all my stuff. And now I'm using the word of my testimony. I was given a testimony about the saving, the protecting power of God before I even needed it. And I said, in Jesus' name, I'm protected. I am set free of all demonic assignments. That became my testimony. And I have a right to because of the blood of the Lamb. Mm. Galatians chapter 6. Turn with me there real quick. So as good as our testimony is about I was an alcoholic and I was a drug addict, but now I'm set free. I'm thankful for those. Those are great. But it's still not quite the testimony that you're going to have that I'm talking about here where you're a continual overcomer. There you overcame. Oh, you're not hearing me. There I did overcome. But I need to stay and remain an overcomer here. So the blood of the lamb wasn't just good enough for me there. It's also good enough for me here. And it's good enough for me there. And now I've got to start lining up my mouth as a constant witness and testimony every single day. Uh, Let me give you an example. How about this? Instead of going around and confessing the fire out of something after you have a symptom... How about going around as your testimony? Thank you, Lord. I operate in divine and perfect health. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet and all points in between, seen and unseen, known and unknown, I thank you, Lord. I have every single cell and fiber of my being soaked with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got a new DNA. I've got a new genealogy. And all that stuff in the past may have had that in my family, but now I've got a new family, and that stuff ain't in this body. That stuff ain't in this blood. Come on now. Well, you may need a blood transfusion. Just accept what Jesus did for you and get it right then. We often spend our time, and I was telling the team in prayer Wednesday night, we often spend our Christian walk on the defensive. That means as long as we keep remaining on the defense in our Christian walk, we'll never operate in the kingdom of God with power and authority. Because I'll always be reactionary. I'll always be knee-jerking and Oh, there's a symptom. Oh, what's that, cancer? My aunt had it. My mom had it. My grandma had it. They said I'm susceptible to it. What is that pain? What is that? Well, if you are supposedly susceptible to it, I would begin to speak right now while you got breath in your lungs. And be, Come on, I begin to speak it out loud and pray it out loud and go, thank you, Lord. I am the healed of the living God. Praise you, Jesus. So Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says this, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Well, brother, I'm not going to say all that stuff until I see all that stuff. I'm not going to call my house paid off and paid for until I win the lottery. I'm not going to go and say my bills are all paid. I'll just deal with it when they come in. No, you better start saying it now. You want to get out ahead? You want to be ahead of this thing? You want to operate as a kingdom of God, child of God, king system? Then you start saying right now, I am debt free. I operate in the... Oh, come on now. I got so much coming in, I'm able to sow and I never miss it at all because too much harvest is always overtaking my sowing. When you start saying that, somebody's like, well, there you go again. That's all about the money. It's all about preaching about money. Well, then you do not serve Jesus Christ because he talked an awful lot about it too because he knew that was where people's heart was. Matthew chapter 6, he says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So that's why Jesus said that. Jesus kept talking about money because he knew he was dealing with their heart. In heaven, how much money do you think is a good amount to start out with? God, I hope at least 150000 annually and benefits, right? No, in heaven, there is no need for a money currency. When you get to heaven, it's still going to be your heart currency. Ah, so keep your heart current with him. Ooh. Somewhere a dog is 
standing up and howling. So somebody say this with me. The blood, the blood and my word, and my word makes, me makes me an overcomer. An overcomer. So we see here, it says, let, let us not be weary in well-doing. Did you know that walking a Christian life can be sometimes wearisome, just like walking in the world? Well, look at this. If you're going to get weary in this life, then at least walk in the Christian part of it. Stop trying to go and act like, well, you know what, I, I, I was doing so good, and oh, I love pastoring, and then oh, there's this, and there's some negatives, and oh, I love traveling, there's so much positive, and then there's negatives, and you know, you could be doing that forever and ever, but the truth is, when it comes down to it, you've got to stop saying and focusing on your weariness and start focusing on the fact that you've got Holy Ghost energy. And how do you do that? Well, the, uh, the blood overcame that for you, but now he needs your word to hook up with what you think needs to happen in your life. So I just say right now in the name of Jesus, I got so much energy, I'm bouncing off the walls. I got so much energy and focus, I don't have to take anything to have the focus and energy that I have. I can go out and work out. I can get up and pray early. I can read the word. I can write books. I can call people. I can meet with people and still have more than enough energy to go in and do a funeral, do a wedding, and then do a 30-day revival. These aren't what ifs. These things have happened. And thank God to be enough energy to be a great husband and enough energy to be a great dad. Family first. Because I'm telling you, that is the part you'll start borrowing from when you're trying to do this in your own strength. You'll start wanting to draw from your family's time so that you can have more energy for the people. And you can't do that. You know how I know? I follow Jesus. He would send them off. He'd have multitudes following. He would be ministering to them, multitudes. And then he'd still send them away. And he'd go off in the mountain apart to pray. Then he had time with just the 12, with just family. Come on now. All right, anyway. So we know what it's like to grow weary sometimes. But I'm telling you, you're in due season. And the title of tonight's message is this. It's time for your testimony. <clears throat> Oh, maybe that won't excite you, but come on. I'm going to tell you, I prophesy over you, that if you'll begin to speak it, you'll begin to see it. It's time for your testimony. Come on. Touch three people and say, it's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Genesis chapter 1, the first 11 verses talk about this. Here's the pattern. And I saw something actually fresh even this morning reviewing this a little bit, I saw something fresh when God was calling into existence everything that we have come to know as light, everything that we have come to know as this earth, this world. And I want you to see something here too. And in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. How many of you all right now are praying for a move of the Spirit? Then stop praying because He's already moving. Your prayer doesn't need to be Holy Ghost move. Your prayer needs to be Holy Ghost move me to move with you. Oh, don't get me started. Too late. I'm telling you, we keep praying for a move of the Spirit. That's why we're seeing it in pockets. And it's usually not from the people that are praying for it. It's usually the ones that are stepping out in boldness to move with it. We know the Holy Ghost didn't show up until Acts chapter 2, right? No. We see in Genesis chapter 1, he's been moving on the face of this earth for that entire time. He shines greater in darkness. Well, if I could just get him to move. It isn't the Holy Ghost that's moving. That's the issue. It's the people. It is. It's the people. 
If you don't like it, go to a church that just talks on leadership. Sit there, get your popcorn, your coffee, pat on the head. See you in 30 minutes if you want to go to the next service. I'm not here for that. I'm here to raise up men of God. I'm here to raise up women of God. I'm here to raise up mighty evangelists. I'm looking ahead. I'm looking at the end time. I'm looking at the harvest. I'm not looking at what feels good. I'm looking at what pleases him. My God. This politician said to me the other day, he's, or yesterday, he said to me, he goes, I call you for prayer because out of all the years that I've known you, you've remained stable, and if anything, you've gotten wilder and more powerful. He said, I've never seen anybody operate, and I'm not trying to toot my horn, I'm getting ready to say this because it's him. I can't do it without him. I mean, me saying, wow, this shirt that my wife got me, wow, isn't this awesome? Yeah, well, it's the shirt, it ain't me. And if you don't like it, then it was my wife. It ain't me. Anyway, so. Thank you. Just remember, I'm married. All right, now. But she goes, so you're saying there's a chance. Anyway, I'm kidding. <laughs> and he says, and I know your prayers work, and that's why I've asked you to come and uh, pray with me about this campaign that's going on. And he says, God's also been dealing with me about possibly getting you hooked up with uh, some of the, uh, the folks there in Oklahoma City that are desperately wanting prayer and needing prayer. And uh, I said, well, I'm not coming there to run any particular race. I'm running mine. You know what I'm saying? I'm not running a campaign. I'm running what God's got for me. And he says, that's why I'm calling you, because you're not going to care if they're Democrat, Republican, or Independent. If they need the power of God, you're going to pray for them. So Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here we see all through verses 1 through 11, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this part a little bit slower, and then we're going to speed this, the rest of it up. But this foundation is important. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Here we go. What is the blood of the Lamb doing? It's already provided. What is the Holy Spirit doing? He's already moving. So what is the problem if I'm facing stuff without form? No evidence. Without form? No manifestation. Void. Hopeless. Darkness. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Where's my breakthrough? When am I going to get my answer? How come this? How come that? How come so-and-so got their breakthrough and I haven't yet? Am I talking to anybody in here yet? I'm telling you what's going to happen is this. You're going to see a pattern here that I'm going to show you that although it's not old covenant and old testament it is in the book of beginnings and this is how our god handles things he saw the same thing you and i face the holy spirit's already moving you don't have to pray for him to move you need to move in your prayer and he goes and god said in verse three god said let there be light and there was light and god saw the light and it was good and god divided the light from the darkness or day and night and then he goes on in verse five god called Verse 6, God said, are we seeing anything yet? My first point I want to give to you regarding it's time for your testimony is number one, declare now, not later. Declare and decree now, not later. Before you ever need the need, begin to declare by the time you get there it's already met. Are you ready? That's why we keep saying it. We've got the example. We have more resources than we have vision. All of our need is always met every single month above and beyond anything we could ask, think, or imagine. I've been saying that for 20 years, and we've been saying we're debt-free and come out of debt quickly in Jesus' name. And Lord, anybody you want us to sow into, anybody you want us to help, we have paid people's cars off. We've helped pay people's houses off. We've helped people pay their mortgages. We've helped people with their groceries during the whole COVID-19 thing. We were looking for people to sow into to help them with their needs, and we did. One family out. After another until we got to the place to where our families and our church were saying we're good we're taken care of we're fine there we would help them and next week they were saying we're good money keeps coming in and then people would call us and say not even knowing we want to give money towards this uh, for uh, you guys to give towards other families and help them and money was just coming in hand over fist why because we were a conduit to let it flow through us the money was moving the spirit was moving but it wasn't 
wasn't until I got my butt up and started moving too that we started to see the moving of the Spirit who's in me, on me, and going through me that out of my belly flows rivers of living water. I'm telling you, God will use you if, he will, if you will just move with Him. Somebody shout, declare now. Come on, shout, declare now. We see him. He said, God said, verse 4, God saw. Verse 5, God called. That means there's stuff waiting for you, just listening for your voice if you just call it. Verse 6, God said. Verse 7, God made. And that's what stuck out to me this morning. We see where God spoke more than we see God creating. He created with his voice, no doubt. But we see here in that word made kind of makes you think something a little bit differently. He didn't just say it and create it. There was something he did with his hands, which we again see later that he took the dirt and he created man. He didn't just say Adam B. He made him. You see what I'm saying? There are going to be times that you and I will be called to speak things, to declare things, to call things. And then there's going to be times where he's going to be like, now you get up and go do something. Oh, come on now. It isn't just me going around and just speaking it and going, What are you doing? I'm a tongue-talking, spirit-filled believer. Even I'll punch that person in the face. You know what I mean? Come on, and I believe in it, but I'm going <laughs> to break their jaw. You know what I'm saying? You can't be going around acting that weird about it. Our church is going to show people how you operate in the supernatural and not make it weird. But there's always going to be somebody that's going to call it weird. Sure, a tumor disappeared. Let's see the paperwork. Even if you did see it, you're going to try and talk it out. Oh, well, something happened. It was a mistake. Or Clara getting that, that blessing, you know, and that's one of about five or six in the past month in the tune of five figures. And I'm sitting there going, she needs to be careful. She needs to put that in a trust fund or something because all these single jackals are going to be coming out of the woodwork and going, hey, Clara, hey, want to go out? You want to take me out? Anyway, so and I'm not just talking about Robert. Can I get a water? Thank you. You want to join the life crew as a, a usher? He said, preach, pastor. I'm just glad you were awake. I didn't know. <laughs> wow. He said, and he saw. He called, and he saw. He made, and he saw. Seeing starts with your saying. He said it. He declared it. He decreed it. He called it, and he made it. But either way, it manifested. But I'm telling you right now, if you keep declaring the wrong thing over your life, the same power that's anointed you to get the right results will be swung over to get the wrong results. I can't believe every time I get in this car, this thing just falls apart. Now, Mom, you're in heaven, so you can't have any unforgiveness. I can see her right now pulling on this angel going, now he, he makes things up. You know that, right? She goes, every time I get in this car, it seems like it falls apart. And I said, Mom, stop, because every time you do, you get in that car, something's falling off of that thing. And I'm serious. I was like, bless your heart. Don't keep saying that. She goes, oh, don't give me all that faith talk. And I said, Mom, seriously. She goes, I've tried the other, but it doesn't work for me. I, all right. Uh, here's what's going on. It doesn't work for you because you said it doesn't work for you. But it, 
it obviously, the faith part, you say that doesn't work for you, doesn't work for you because you said it doesn't work for you. But then the negative stuff that you're convinced with passion and fire, you say every time I get in my car, this stuff just falls apart every time I get in. And it does. And she goes, exactly, every single time. I said, shut your mouth, mama. I love you, but let me help you. Well, then she started listening. She goes, because I had to borrow her car. She goes, oh, you don't want to borrow this thing. Every time, you, every time I get in that car, that thing starts to fall apart. I'm like, Mom, it's a Lincoln Town car. They are meant to be borderline you know, tanks in overseas combat. I said, it shouldn't be falling apart. And she goes, well, mine does. And I'm like, stop saying that. And she goes, are you talking about me being in faith? Because when I say the faith stuff, it doesn't work. Stop it. She goes, if you need to borrow it, though, I want to be a blessing. Okay. So we got in her car. And we got, before I started it, I, what did we say? We grabbed hands. Every time we get in this car, it drives perfect. It drives fine. Nothing falls off of it. Nothing breaks down. And so we drive it, you know, and she says, I don't need it this week, so you just take it, and, you know, and then we bring it back. And she goes, well, what's the damage? And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, did anything happen? I said, yes. She goes, what? I said, it was perfect. It was, oh, I can't believe the devil. I'm like, mom, the devil did not bless us with your car to make it work. And then when you get in it, then all of a sudden God's teaching you a lesson. Well, that was a season she was going through. She was saying to me, she goes, I'm telling you I'm going through something right now, and I'm, I'm just fed up with God right now. And I said, okay, all right, appreciate your honesty. What's wrong? She goes, every time, have you seen the movie, the, the show with Charlie Brown and Lucy and the football? And I said, of course, you're the one that made me watch it every year. I love that show. And she goes, I'm going to tell you right now, every time I go to kick the football, God's like Lucy and pulls the ball away, and I go flying, flying on my, my can. And I said, no, that is not how that works. Every time God sets me up, he holds that football and says, come on, honey, kick it, give it a kick. And I go running as hard as I can, just knowing that he's going to pull that ball out from underneath me and I'm going to go flying up in the air and on my back. And I said, mom, did you ever think that maybe you weren't the one that was kicking, but you were the one pulling the ball away? She goes... Well, I've never thought of that. I said, Mom, you even have the dark hair. You are Lucy. <laughs> and God's Charlie Brown just trying to kick the ball. And he's the one that keeps giving you chance after chance after chance. And you're the one that keeps pulling the ball out because you don't trust him. Well, it broke her free. It broke her free. That... Praise God for Jehovah Peanuts. And uh, I mean, <laughs> Jehovah Brown, Jehovah Snoopy. I'm, I'm just trying to find something. Jehovah Linus, Jehovah Woodstock. I love that. So, so your brother says that, cracks up at himself. You go to high-five him because you're proud that it was part of your family, and he won't look at you a high-five at all. That's really cold, man, the support we're getting here from these brothers. This is why you need to go to camp and get saved. All right, now, somebody shout declare now. Mark chapter 5, and we'll, we'll, we'll speed this up here. I love this. This is with the woman with the issue of blood. Don't feel bad. She's healed. Mark chapter 5 says something amazing in the Amplified, and uh, when you get there, say, I'm there. All right. Turn with me to verse 25, Mark 5, 25. Woman with the issue of blood hears of Jesus, and look at what happens here. In the Amplified, Mark 5, 25. There he is. And just for the record, I'll probably go to other scriptures in the future tonight, too. Mark chapter 5 and verse 25, a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians, spent all that she had, was no better, but instead grew worse. Uh oh, watch this. When she had heard the reports concerning Jesus, she came up behind him in the throng, touched his garment, verse 28, for she kept on saying 
If I'd only touch his garments, I'll sh I shall be restored to health. For she kept on declaring. She kept on decreeing. She kept on creating her new present. When I declare now instead of waiting later, I'm actually stepping into a better present than even the present I'm in right now. Ah, that's why Life Revolution Church and a lot of the members, almost all of them, did not skip a beat or miss a beat. As a matter of fact, I know one family in here had a great miracle that took place in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic scare. It was an incurable disease, something to do with the adrenal glands and uh, um, Atticin, what is it, the, the Addison's disease, all incurable absolutely cured in the midst of all of that because pastors cared enough dared enough to come without a mask and without gloves and i was saying this to the prayer team on wednesday night i don't think for a minute that the devil hasn't had a mask and gloves on the church for a long time already but she kept on saying Go with me to Revelation chapter 1. There's so many scriptures on this, but for sake of time, I'm going to skip through some of these. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. Put that up on the screen real quick. I'm going to go through these faster. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Underline that. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Here we go. Here's a reference to Jesus in his blood again. Here's a reference of him being basically over us who are his kids, his kings. You see this? Verse 6. Oh, here we go. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Watch this. He has made you and I kings and priests. You cannot ordain me as a king if you don't have the authority and the royalty to do it, honey. But because he's got the royalty and the authority, he not only made you and I kings, he made us priests. There was a, 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 a preachy thing that came out a few years ago about you need to know if you're a king or a priest. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're limiting God because he made us kings and priests. So watch this. A king, when he gets up and he declares and decrees something over the kingdom, how many months does it take to finally get into play? No, as soon as he declares right then, what he decrees over that kingdom has got to be put into full force and authority right then. But what about a priest? Why do you think Jesus said to the leper, now go show yourself unto the priest? Because the priest was the only one that could declare and decree a thing over those that were healed, allowing them back into public. They had an authority to declare. So he has made you and I, come on somebody, he's made you and I kings, he's made us priests, so that we can begin to declare over ourselves, over those in the influence that we have over, over anybody we come in contact, we can lay hands on somebody with Addison's and declare in Jesus' name, you're the healed of the Lord, we command that to now go out of your body. Don't take it lightly. He made us kings and priests. We've got the ability, somebody shout it with me, to declare now. Oh, Romans chapter 4. Y'all getting anything out of this tonight? I appreciate all three of you. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Talking about Abraham. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calls those things which be not 
as though they were. So what if you're declaring a testimony that hasn't yet manifested yet? That's part of it. Who cares if it hasn't manifested just yet? It doesn't mean it's not going to. The hard part's already done. The blood has already been shed. He's just waiting for you to start shedding the right words and get that word out and begin to speak it out and to begin to declare with boldness that all my bills are paid. My body is healed. My family is taken care of. We we're growing. We're growing. We're increasing. We're increasing. Come on, somebody. I am blessed to be a blessing. It's not just little flippant words. My God, I'm telling you right now, how much time is left on this earth for you? How much time do you have? How many breaths away are you from meeting Jesus face to face? What are you doing with your breaths? Are you saying the right things? Are you declaring the right things? Or are you just getting the same old junk you always get? Because why? Every Every time I get in it, it breaks down. This old body. You don't know what I'm going through. You'll be there one day. Yes, thank you for the warning. Seriously. My eye will not dim. My joints will be fluid and no pain. I know I can't live forever if Jesus tarries, but dear God, my quality of life isn't going to be crawling around depending on somebody to take care of me. Hmm. Look, if I can see a 95-year-old man doing this kind of thing on YouTube and jumping around and with this all kind of crazy, what do they call it, clogging and Irish dancing and all of that, then bless God, if he can do that, I can do that in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, it's time for your testimony. Turn with me to Mark 11 here. My God. I'm expecting to hear miracles even this week. Clara's have been just piling up. I've had a couple others that have been piling up because, oh, I haven't talked to you, Pastor. I love that. Pile them up, Lord. It's time for our testimony. Mm. It is due season. Somebody shout, due season is now. Somebody shout, suddenly is now. Somebody shout, it's time for my testimony. Mm. Second thing is to expect now. Mark 11 says this. Oh, I love it. It cracks me up because the disciples traveled with Jesus, were around him in that anointing, and still, just like us, have questions. But Mark chapter 11, verse 12, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And when seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came happily, if he would might find any figs thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs apparently wasn't yet. But see, that's the problem. Because of the degenerative world, the leaves gave him the impression that the figs should have been there. But it's funny, but the leaves were actually a deception because fruit wasn't growing the way it was supposed to because of the fall of man. So when these figs weren't on that tree and he was hungry, he was happy to go to the fig tree to get figs. Because when a man sees food and he's hungry, there's something that sends off endorphins through his body that says, we get ready to eat. Makes me happy. And then you go to order from that one restaurant, the thing you always get. That's why you go to that restaurant. And they say, I'm sorry, we're out. I said, why would that be? Because of COVID. And then you punch another person in the face. And you're really trying not to keep punching people in the face. But she'll get over it. She'll heal. And then, I'm kidding. It's a joke. My God, you can't even joke today. Because of all these pansies and these weak spine little unicorn loving little pansy freaks that tiptoe through their don't know what thing they're identifying with. I'll help you identify with what you are. My God, I lost three friends to the, this week on Facebook. Good. Open them up for people that are going in the same direction. Up. All right. Now, let me get to this. Jesus was happy there was food. When he got there, he wasn't happy. You want to see the result of making a man, even the son of God, upset when you don't get him fed when he's hungry? He goes into the temple and tore it up. I was, I was reading that. I was like, huh. Oh, the anointing was on him. Well, yeah. But the man was hungry, too, because he didn't get a chance to eat. 
And if you've been in ministry and you went to go eat and you were thinking you were going to eat, like the time we got picked up from the airport here recently, and uh, they took us right to the hotel, and Cassidy and my wife and I are looking at me and going, well, what are we going to do? Uh, I guess we'll put our luggage up in the room and see if anybody can deliver any food. She goes, I saw a McDonald's. Remember, Cassidy's like, I saw the Golden Arches just a block away. <laughs> so we leave the hotel, and we're walking. And we get to McDonald's. The only thing that was open was a drive through not a walk-through. <laughs> they wouldn't let us walk through because it's safer to not carry COVID in a car. So we go back to the hotel. It's like 1030 now. DoorDash. Oh, my daughter's got them all figured out. And I said, what is that? She goes, well, I downloaded it on Mama's phone. It's an app right here. I'm like... I mean, you got to put all the, the money stuff, the credit card and all that. She goes, I already did all that. I'm like. <laughs> I've never heard of DoorDash. This is my first time, and my cash is in DoorDash, and I did not know that because of her. 12-year-old, man. And so here, here I am. I'm, I'll go, okay, all right, we'll order from McDonald's. It's right down the street. How hard can it be? The guy met us with this big sealed bag, such a kind door dasher. I said, thank you. I said, I'd hug you, but there's rules right now. We took the bag up. There was nothing in that bag that was right. Uh, let me clarify. There was nothing with my order that was right. Cassidy's happy, got her little beats on, watching YouTube, eating away. Mine's loaded, not, uh, not an onion burger, nothing but onions, a little bit of beef, mustard, pickles, everything that helps make people vomit. And uh, I'm looking at this, right, this sack, and I was like, my wife's like, oh, I'm sorry, it seems like everybody's order is right but yours. She goes, yep. Yeah. She spoke it. My wife says, well, maybe you should have prayed more. Well, Jesus, when the figs weren't there, sir, how come you didn't pray more? I'm asking for my wife. Anyway, <laughs> because there's a devil and he operates in food to men of God. Anyway, that's why. So anyway... When you have a testimony that manifests, you don't have to expect anymore. It's right there. But when you're ordering through God Dash or whoever, and you're expecting something to be right, you better know it's going to be right when it comes from God. Are you hearing me? When it comes from God, it's going to be right and it's going to be on time. And this is the problem that we have a lot of times is we aren't expecting now for the things we need tomorrow. We're not expecting now before the things we even know we have need of. We need to stay in a constant steady state of expecting now. Somebody say it with me. Expect now. We've got to be in that state. Hebrews 11.1 1 says what? Now faith is. Now faith is the substance of things Hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Look at the two words right there. Substance and evidence. Before you ever have substance or evidence of things you can't see yet. You have to have substance and evidence of things in you. Which has an expectation to it. Come on, let me help you with this. A lot of times we agree with something, but we don't really have it broken down simply. It's usually too complicated, and then we think the more complex and the more deep it is, it's the, oh, that must be the key. The key is simplicity. There is something you have need of. Before you ever have the need, you ought to be thanking God it's already met. 
Because you carry the need meter in you. Hey, watch this. Before you get any negative report, you should already have the hope and the substance that is called faith that you never get that kind of report. And then that faith substantializes evidence that you can't see yet. But what is evidence you can't see? Obviously, when you go in and study anything about forensic science, there's stuff that was left there that you couldn't see. Come on, there's DNA there that you couldn't see. Come on, there may be trickles of blood or hair follicles or whatever. You just couldn't see. But there's still evidence there. And there's something that causes us to go in with the anointing of God and begin to see things that others can't see. The power of God, they be able to suspect or to, to, to show up things that you couldn't see before. All of a sudden now it's as if I already have it. There's something about that with forensic science that that when they start running DNA samples, they find out who did what, who did what to who, when did they do it. It's crazy what they can find in the natural. But what is it with faith? I still can't see certain things, but there's a hope on the inside of me. There's a faith that's rising up on the inside of me. There's a substance that's there that's about to produce evidence that maybe you can't see, she can't see, nobody can see. But are you ready for this? That substance on the inside of me is going to one day cause us to be sitting in our own building, paid for and paid off. You may not be able to see it, but there's DNA from the Holy Ghost. There's DNA from Jesus. Jesus, there is blood that's been shed, and all I got to do is line up my mouth and declare it now, and expect it now, and I'll have it now. Mm. Somebody say it's time for my testimony. Come on, you were in Romans. Turn back to that. My God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I came tonight anyway. I figure if you're going to have a bedtime story, this might as well be a good one. Thank you. Romans chapter 4, verse... I'm so excited about the seed we sowed tonight. <laughs> oh, listen, you know you're a sower when you get excited about the seed you sow more than the harvest that comes in. There is not a month... Listen, I'm decreeing it, Tamara. There is not a month that we will have that we'll ever be behind. We'll always be up front and on time with plenty left over every single month. Whether it's this building, the next building, whether... I'm, oh, thank you, Jesus. Romans 4, verse 18. Who against hope? What did we just say? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So here we see Abraham, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. There's a whole lot that's been spoken in this word, but you might get there and you might not. Somebody says, well, that's a negative, Pastor. Yeah, but not me being negative. The might has to do with your mouth. The might has to do with what we agree with. The might has to do with do I declare it and expect it now. Because here's the thing. Abraham did what? Because Sarah laughed at him la about the word that came over them about I know you're pretty old and whatnot. But that's where the miracle's coming in. And I, I want you all to, to do what it takes. Notice there's certain things where you speak it. There's certain things that you call, and then in this case, there's certain things that have to be made. Amen. And for him to fulfill the thing that was going to cause her to be expecting, Amen. there was some stuff that had to be made. But instead, he chose and went another route. I'm trying, I see kids in here, so I'm trying to be cool. Went another route instead of being with Sarah. And then God finally just said, when are you going to do what I told you to do with who I told you to do it with? Hmm. So shall your seed be. Hmm. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. What does that mean? 
Get on with it here. Watch this. That means that he wasn't looking at external situations, external circumstances. Do I have enough money? Do I not have enough money? Do I have the right people? Do I not have enough people? Do I have what it takes? Do I have this? Do I have enough schooling? Am I a doctor? Am I not? Do I have a book out? Do I not? Do we have the best voices? Do we not? Am I out there? or am I? Come on. Am I making sense? Or do I have what it takes because I've got a word from God Almighty when he he said I could do it, then I can do it. I don't consider my shortcomings. I don't consider my weaknesses. I only consider his strengths because I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not going to be in the category of I might fulfill the promises. Somebody say it's time for your testimony. Hey, look, you're in Romans 4. Here's the third point and final point. Once you learn to do this, we declare now, we expect now, this is the icing on the cake. Rejoice now. Mm. If instead of complaining and rehearsing, you got to dancing and rejoicing. <laughs> Romans 4, the next verse 20 says this. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. You want to know when people start staggering? It's a sign and a fruit of unbelief. When people begin to waver, it's a fruit of unbelief. But he did not stagger, but he was strong in faith. Well, what was the indicator of him being strong in faith? The next part, giving glory to God. You want to show me somebody strong in faith? They'll drop to their knees. They'll lift their hands. They're not going to wait for anybody else to praise God with them. They'll actually lead the pack, and they're not even worship leaders. They know how to lift up their voice. They know how to lift up their hands. They know how to open up their heart. They know how to rejoice now. Before I ever needed to rejoice, I rejoice. He said rejoice, and again, I say rejoice. I'm telling you, if the Apostle Paul said to rejoice, and again, I say rejoice, then I'm here to tell you right now, you and I I need to rejoice before we ever see it, before we ever need it. I'm just going to walk around rejoicing just in case. Hey, it's your choice to rejoice. Can somebody help ride the mic? First Peter chapter 1, I'm telling you, this is it. Oh, my God. And I'm going to give you a moment just to walk in this and rejoice because there's some stuff you all have been expecting. There's some stuff you all been declaring. There's some stuff you all been believing. There's some stuff you've been rebuking and puking and renouncing and denouncing. But I'm telling you, that's not what you have to do every single time. You just need to know you're a king's kid. I am a king myself. I, If I'm a king and a priest, I have the right to declare. I have the right to decree. I have the authority that God has given me right now. Everything you have right now on your weakest day is stronger than the devil on his best day. You have the ability to lay hands. You have the ability to lay your voice. You have the ability to lay that promise. You have the ability to rejoice now. Nobody is stopping you except you. Stop blaming the devil. I don't feel like it. I don't think this is the right song. It don't matter. Make the right song. Sing melody out of your heart begin to make melody out of your heart let that flow out of you first peter chapter 1 and verse 6 says wherein you greatly rejoice i wish you'd get a hold of that he says though now for a season and i want you to underline the next three words if need be hmm 
wherein you greatly rejoice. I mean, rejoicing is good. Today's church culture doesn't allow it except for those on the stage that have got it perfected with their in-ears and their music charts. Wherein you greatly rejoice that now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise. Hmm. I, I got to stop on that part right there. Does the junk that comes against you find you praising already? See, if I'll rejoice now, that means whatever tries to come against me at a later date is going to end up finding me doing what? I worship you. I praise you. I give you all the glory. What does a strong man or woman of faith do? He always, she always gives God the glory. How does that look? Well, I just sit there. He knows my heart. Oh, no. Somewhere down the line, you got to act a little bit indignant. Somewhere down the line, you got to look and act a little bit undignified. Because if he truly has called you to do great things, one of the things he's called you to do greatly is to rejoice. Again, I might be in a season, if need be, but it don't always need to be. This stuff's going to find me praising, and it's going to find me honoring, and it's going to find me glorifying him. Mm. Why? Because I haven't, whom having not seen, I love. In whom though now I see him not, I still believe. Yet I rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Why? Because it causes me to receive the very end to my faith. Look at verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. What does that mean to receive the end of my faith? Well, it's not just my life only. That can also involve things here on this earth. For instance, you know, a move, a big move. COVID messed up everything for some people in their big move, you know, or their this and that and the other. But it didn't need to be. Let me go over to this side maybe here, the smoking section. I'm just going by what it smells and looks like. Now, now watch this. When my credit and her credit was shot overnight, there was a season that said we could not qualify for anything other than what we were in, and we were about to lose that through foreclosure. But it didn't need to be. But it happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. But when I got a hold of the fact that it didn't need to be, I changed the need to serve. We began to sow, we began to reap, we began to worship, we began to declare, we began to expect, we began to rejoice, we began to do it all right now, and things turned around. God spoke to one person and called me up and said, God told me to take care of all of that, and one person changed our life, completely turned us around, and then another one came up on top of that and said, how fast can you sell your house? I don't know why, because God won't let me sleep. I've been waking for the last two weeks, and he's been telling me to give you a house a brand new house i'm telling you ah you may not like it but god's going to use even just one person person to change your life to change your driving habit to change your living stature come on to change your work environment to change your ministry one person even watching right now one person can change your life forever if you just learn to rejoice right now and give god all the glory all the praise all the honor come on somebody stand up and rejoice now come on i don't know what you have need of but lift your hands lift your heart lift your voice i'm telling you something's happening while you're rejoicing in here everything's changing out there while you're rejoicing in here things are moving on your behalf angels of god are out searching to and fro to find the people to help you in this time come on don't let me rejoice for you
Come on now. I said it's time for your testimony. The thing you've been begging God for. The thing you've been pleading God for. The thing you've been needing to have happen in your life. Now is the time for your testimony. Somebody ought to shout. It's time right now. Somebody shout. It's time for my testimony to manifest. Now. I declare now. Come on, say it. I declare now. I expect now. And I rejoice now. Jesus, we praise your holy name. And young men, don't wait till you're older. Do it now. Learn it now. You don't have to be perfect with it. You don't have to know where all the scriptures are. You just say, man, I thank you, Lord, that I have this now. I thank you, Lord, I have that now. You don't have to always be thinking that everything that the enemy, you may not even have known that it was the enemy. But whatever assignment of darkness that the devil had, like I told you last week, I believe in you guys. I mean, my heart is with you. We got this. And you're going to do great and mighty things. (laughs) Come on, come on, come on. Maybe go ahead and dim the house lights. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that the Holy Ghost begins to move upon each and every person. I know you're already moving, but Lord, I thank you that they're open and receptive for you to move upon them in the name of Jesus. Got too much monitor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. And Father, for anybody that's here right now under the sound of my voice, Or even those that are watching online. You may be thinking, okay, well, this all felt good. This all sounded good, but I need something to change in my life right now. And I'm just not there, but I don't even know this Jesus you're talking about. Well, if you're watching right now and you just happen to be on, somebody shared it and a friend of yours shared it and you're watching, it's not an accident. We have had no accidents since we started broadcasting and going on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. These accidents are wholly inspired assignments of God Almighty. (laughs) So you may be here. I'm looking out. I'm seeing the different faces. I think we're all good in here and the family's here. But whether you're here right now or not and you're watching online... You would say, you know what? I want you to pray for me. I'd be honored to pray for you. I'm going to count to three for those that are even here in this house and those that are watching online. Don't be foolish and, or feel foolish by lifting up your hand. I want you to actually lift your hand when I count to three if that's you and you want me to pray for you. All over this place. One, two, three. If you want prayer, lift your hand. Even those watching. If you were to die right now, you don't know if you would miss hell and go to heaven, but you want to know. There's something that's stirring on the inside of you. You can't even explain. Your heart is beating out of your chest. You're saying, I know there's something else. I know this has got to be real. There's an eternity. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, friend. He wants to translate you from this dark world that's tried to hold you in bondage into this marvelous light that he has set you free to live in. All over this place, I've counted to three, but if that's you again, one, two, three, if you want prayer, lift your hand. Those watching online, I'm going to pray for you right now. I want everybody here that either lifted their hand or didn't to join in in this prayer and say this with me, oh God in heaven, come on, say it out loud, you watching online too, say it out loud, oh God in heaven, I thank you for Jesus, 
I thank you that he died for me. That he rose again for me on the third day. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me and cleanse me. Wash me white as snow. I receive you fully into my heart. I say with my mouth, I believe with all my heart. Jesus, you are my Lord, my Savior, and my soon coming King. Now lift up your hands and begin to praise Him. Even there online, right where you're at. We've been having people write us and tell us that they prayed that prayer. Right after you're done praising God. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you to go and message us. Let us know you prayed that prayer. We want to send you some material on our dime. We want to bless you and sow that seed into you to help you on your journey. Glory to God. Come here, Sister Rose. This is like the fifth time God has told me to pull you out. So let's go ahead and sing this together. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. helping her um, uh, 
We had the opportunity to, um, I know he's already been dedicated and Sawyer has too, but we had the opportunity to dedicate Sawyer in our church as a Life Revolution church family. So they didn't ask me to, so I'm going to take my liberty as his grandfather that I'm going to dedicate him anyway. Even though he's already, we're going to get him doubly dedicated. Just in case Pastor Rodney missed anything, which we know he didn't. Father, we just dedicate this precious one to you, Finn. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus that he will do exactly what you've called him to do without effort. That he'll have a grace on him and does have a grace on him. And a shouting preacher's voice. He is divinely protected. He is called, anointed, and set apart. And there's something so powerful and special and precious about him. And we thank you, Lord, as we dedicate him to you, doubly so. We thank you that he is yours and he's your mighty voice your mighty vessel, and this young man's going to do great exploits for the King of glory. In Jesus' name, divine protection, divine health, and divine prosperity over you. In Jesus' name, and no constipation or diarrhea. Just a balance, just a good balance there, Finn. Hey, what you think? Let these precious ones see you. Well, here, let's... Here we go. Oh, sorry about that. I poked your eye out with my mic after I just called for protection. All right, here we go. Are you going to look? Here we go. (laughs) Okay, here. No, I'm just... (laughs) Oh, thank you. You'd almost act like you're part of our church. What a blessing. Okay, we'll get to you in just a second. (laughs) It's because I was laying hands on him. (laughs) This is awesome. Well, come on, lift your hands and praise God for that. That's so awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Well, we sure love you. We appreciate you. Were y'all blessed tonight? How many of you got testimonies that you're not going to wait for? You're going to cause them to come to pass, huh? How many of y'all are going to speak them? You're going to say them? You're going to declare and decree them? And if if God tells you he's going to have you make them, we're going to make them. But either way, praise the Lord. We've got it now. Somebody say, it's time. It's time time for my testimony. Come on, if you agree with that, shout amen. God bless you. We will see you again next week. Glory to God. God bless you. We love you.